Hello everyone. In the previous video, I showed you how to make a help command with embeds. In this video, we'll take it one step further and add select menus. We'll be continuing from where we left off in the previous video, so I'd recommend you check that out first in case you haven't already. There'll be a link to that in the description. To repeat what was said in the previous video, I will be using Nextcord, which is based on Discord.py 2.0. You'll need to either be using Discord.py 2.0, Nextcord, or another library based on Discord.py 2.0. In a previous video, I showed how to install it. In order to add select menus, we'll create a view class. So we're going to create a class help view that inherits from Nextcord.ui.view. And this will be Discord.ui.view if you're using a different library. Import Nextcord. And inside of here, we'll say def in it and we'll say self we'll see later what we'll need to pass it first of all we need to do super dot in it because that will call the constructor for the view so it'll be fully initialized if we want to we can set a timeout we'll make this a keyword argument so we can put a star here that will separate positional arguments from keyword arguments over here we'll say timeout optional float equals 120.0 and that will basically be our default timeout we pass this over here as timeout equals timeout now if we want to change the timeout we just have to pass it to this view and we'll want to say self dot add item in order to add the drop down we'll create a class for the drop down that way we can add our callback so the first thing we'll do is say class help drop down it's going to inherit from ui dot select and over here we can say def init, def in itself. We will call the constructor for the select. And over here we can pass in the properties. For example, placeholder, we can say choose a category because our select min will have all different cogs that we can choose from. We can set min values to be one which would mean that in order to activate this menu they have to choose a value and also max values be one that means that they can't choose more than one value. Once they choose one, that's it. And then we can say options. We want to create a list of options by filtering out our help commands mapping. So we can give it options over here. And in some asynchronous function, we will create this options list. So we can say options is going to be, we can say list of next core dot select option. We'll also have to have a callback over here. This will be the function that gets called when the select menu gets activated. So it will take in the interaction and then we'll do something with it. So for now, I'll just write pass over here because I want to go and finish this help view first. So you can say help drop down and pass it the options again. We will make this a argument over here, list select option. And we may also want to have an interaction check. This will allow us to make sure that only the person who called help command will be able to activate the dropdown and not address anyone. So we can say async def interaction check is going to take in self and a next court dot interaction. And what's going to return is going to be a Boolean, like whether or not the interaction is valid or not. So we'll need to have some context from the help command in order to know um, who the user was. So we can also just pass in the entire help command as an option over here. So you can say my help command, and we can also set the help command to be this help command. And we can make it have an underscore at the beginning that will tell it's a private field. We don't need to access it from elsewhere. Then we'll just say self dot help command dot context dot author is equal to interaction dot user and return whether this is true so if the author of the help command context is the interaction user then it will allow us to make this interaction otherwise it will just skip it since this comes later in the file we can put this in quotes to avoid the issue of it not finding it since this is just a type annotation that will work and it knows that this is the class my help command. 
Now inside of this callback, we want to get the cog help command page and update the current message. Currently, we create these help command pages using this embed equals this. Since we want this embed, but we don't want to do the same destination.send, we can make, put this into a separate function and call it from our and call it from the drop-down menu. So I'm going to put over here async def cog help embed, and it's going to take self and the commands.cog, and we're just going to like return this embed. And then all we have to do here is just say self dot cog help embed, pass it the cog. This doesn't have to be private. We can make it public because we will be accessing it outside of this class. But now that we have this separate function, we will be able to do that. So over here, it's going to return an embed. So you can put embed over there. This isn't required, it's just a type annotation. And we'll over here say embed equals, we'll need to get the help command first. So let's pass the help command into this function. So we can actually just say help command over here and make sure that we add it over here as well. Help command, my help command. And over here, self.help command equals help command. And then over here, we can say self.help command dot cog help embed and pass it the cog, which we can get by saying self.help command dot context dot bot dot get cog and then pass the name of the cog by saying self dot values sub zero. Now self dot values is a thing for drop down menus. It'll give us the list of values they've selected. We're going to make it so that the cog's name is the value that will get returned by making that the label of the option. So that when this drop down menu has an interaction, the self dot values will be the name of the cog. So we can get the cog using its name with the get cog function. And then we can get the embed by using the cog help embed function, which we made. And then all we have to do is update the message. So we can say await interaction dot response dot edit message embed equals embed. And this will need to be an async function. And before we can try this out, we'll just need to make sure we have this options and we pass this help drop down into the message. So I'm going to create another function here called cog select options, which will generate the list of cogs that they're able to access. So we can say to self and it will return a list of select options. We can start out by saying options list next score dot select option equals empty list. And we can say for cog and command set in self dot get bot mapping. So that's going to get us the mapping for our bot dot items. And then we want to filter these commands. So you can say filtered equals this. If not filtered, continue. Options dot append next dot select option. Now we want to give this a label. The label will be the name of the cog. So we could say cog dot qualified name if cog else no category like we did before. Then the description that will just appear. You can say cog dot description if cog and cog dot description else none. So there's no cog description, just leave it out. But also keep in mind that select options can only have up to a hundred characters in the description, I believe. So we may want to also just trim this saying like up to a hundred. So that will make it so that if this description is longer than a hundred characters, it will trim it up to only the first 100. And now let's return this options list and quickly add this view to our help command so we can test this out. We can say view equals help view and we'll need to pass it the options and the help command. So we'll say, uh, we can say self for the help command and then for the options we can say self dot well, let's just make this a separate line because it's going to need to be awaited. So we can say options equals await self dot cog dot options and then we pass this into the constructor. Now let's refresh this. We have a syntax error, line 42. 
we are missing a closing parentheses over here. Now let's refresh the bot and it connected. Let's try this out. And we have a select menu over here. We click ping. It does not seem like it worked. What happened? It's never awaited the cog help embed. So where do we use this? Over here we have it. This should be await self.cog.help embed. And also over here, it should be awaited. Just because this is an async function because it needs to filter the commands, which is a coroutine, so it will need to be in an await. So now let's refresh this. Let's try it one more time. And we get the ping help. If we do random, we get random help. And then help, we get the help command help. And now let's say we want to allow them to go back to the home page. Let's say they want to see this at the beginning. We can do that by just adding another option at the very beginning of this list. So you can say options.append, say next chord dot select option. We'll say label equals home and description equals go back to the main menu. And one more thing is that we can add emojis to each of these options. So you can say like emoji equals some house emoji. Got one over here. That should work. And we'll also need to make sure that our callback understands that home should do something separate. So we will only want to do the cog help embed if they're selecting a cog help. So we can say if self.values sub so zero is not equal to self dot options sub zero dot value. So if they're if they have not selected the first option, then it should do cog help embed. Otherwise, we'll want to do bot help embed. So we'll need to create another function, just like this one, but for bot help. We'll say a sync def bot help embed self mapping dictionary and all I have to do is put this over here return it this will return the embed just as this returns an embed and all I have to do over here is embed equals await self dot bot help embed. And we could do that over here as well, just to make it a little bit cleaner, just put on a separate line. Now we are able to use bot help embed to get the help embed. So let's do that. Self dot help command dot bot help embed and we'll pass it self dot help command get bot mapping and that should get us the bot help page. So now let's refresh this. Check out what this looks like. We have help goes to help home. It did not work because we again forgot to use await. Ping goes to ping. Home goes back to the home page. And we can keep going between different cogs and the home page. Now, one more thing is that we want, might want to have emojis for each of these cogs. Now, I don't really want to hard code these into the help command because it's best to make this more modular and dynamic. So instead, I'm going to put an emoji with each of these classes and then access that emoji if it exists. So in the random class, I can put over here a cog emoji equals the emoji for random. So let's say I want a dice emoji, I can go get the dice emoji, put it over here. Now over here, I can say cog emoji equals the ping pong emoji. We can get that from over here and in our help command, we can even 
make a cog emoji. And this one will be, I think I like to use the question mark for this one. And now that all of our cogs have a cog emoji, we'll just need to add that into our options. So we can say emoji equals get attribute cog and then cog emoji or none. So this will basically check if there is a cog emoji attribute in the cog. If there isn't, it will just give us none. If there is a cog emoji in the cog, it will return the cog emoji in this variable. So that works perfectly for sending emoji to this function because if there is no emoji, we'll just put none over here. So we'll just have no emoji. And now let's refresh this. Try our help command one more time. We get our emojis for each of our cogs. And to make it a little bit more colorful, we can add them inside of the embeds as well. We'll have over here, let's say, we can go into our help embed function. Over here we have name equals cog.qualified name. So we can say emoji equals get the emoji. And then we can say cog label equals emoji name if emoji else just the name. And then we, instead of um, name over here, we'll say cog label. So now this will be for the bot help page. And we might want to also have this for cog help pages and even command help pages if they're part of the cog. So over here, when we do cog help, we can get the emoji and then say title equals emoji and then the cog.qualified name if emoji else just cog qualified name and similarly for commands we can say command dot cog and then we can say for the title emoji and then the command dot qualified name if emoji else command dot qualified name if we say help we will see all of our emojis next to our cog names if we go to a specific cog, we will see the emoji there. And if we do help for a command, we will see the emoji there as well. If we do help for a specific cog, we will also get the same bed that we would get if we were to go to the main help page and then select ping. And we'll also notice that this timeout is 120 seconds. If it takes them longer than 120 seconds to use the menu, will give an interaction error. So it may be better for the user if we remove the select menu from the message if it takes them longer than the timeout. To do that, all we have to do is say async def on timeout and remove the select when this automatically gets called, which would happen when it gets timed out. We can say self.clear items. That will remove everything from the view. We'll also have to update the message. So we can say self help command, we'll need to get the response message somehow. We can do that by saving it in a variable. For example, when we do send bot help, we can say self.response equals this message, and then we'll be able to access it over here. And we can say dot edit message, just edit, and then view equals self. And that will basically say, update the view in the message to have a view that has no items in it. This code will be available on GitHub. I hope that you were able to learn something from this and you'll be able to customize it on your own. In an upcoming video, I hope to cover pagination with buttons to go left and right in a menu. If you found this interesting, please share and like this video, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye!